The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the uh, December 21st. Forgot my days there. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Now is not too soon at 877-927-6648. Of course, you can call us locally, 727-445-1044. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, inside the Tiger's Den. All pings are welcome. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trading down 18 points at 19.956. S&P is off 2, trading at 22.68. NDX off 4 points at 49.49. NASDAQ Composite. She's trading out at 54.76. That's uh, off seven points. The Russell 2000, where is she at out here? Where is it? Where is it? Where Do I not have the Russell 2000? How could that be? Very interesting. In any event, the Sox index, that is still up a point. So basically flat out here. Gold is uh, flat, trading 11.33. Silver is down 11 pennies. Uh, natural gas has had a uh, big move, up 23 cents. Burr, it's cold out there. Lead the upside. It's NetEase. N-T-E-S is the ticker symbol up by uh, six bucks and change. Trade now at 223. Mer us N V up 45%. Maybe that is a uh, maybe that's a uh, IPO. I don't know. Uh, uh, boy, Actelion, A-C-T-E-L-I-O-N. Actelion Limited up nine uh, nearly ten percent or five bucks. Whirlpool is whirling it up to the upside, four dollars and fifty five cents. Sherwin Williams painting it painting it green today, up four dollars as well. To the downside, leading the charge, you've got Lindsay Corp down eight bucks, nearly ten percent to the downside. Regenerative Pharmaceuticals off six, Google's off six, FedEx is down about uh, five bucks. So we've got some things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to uh, look at out there. So you can just give me a call, send me an email, ping me in the den. Any of those, as I say, will do. Let's start off by taking a look at, you know, not a lot to really, with flattish type markets, we're certainly in holiday trading out here. Thinner today, going to be really thin tomorrow, going to be almost non-existent come Friday out here. So we don't have a lot of movement here. You know, if we go take a look at the uh, Dow, I just look at a plane chart out here, see if there's really what, you know, here, well, I guess this is really left over from yesterday's conversation. Nothing has really changed there. But uh, let me turn off these profiles. Let me turn off this volume here. And just in case you missed yesterday's show, let's do this. Let's pull this back here. And uh, when we're taking a look at the Dow, you know, there's a couple, there's many different patterns that you and I trade. One of those patterns that we certainly pay attention to are consolidating patterns. And the reason that we do that is when price breaks out of a consolidation, what we have is what's referred to as a measured move. It's equal to or greater than that consolidation. Now, on a daily chart here, because we've got larger consolidation we can look at, but inside the Dow on a daily basis, you and I both know that the Dow was trading sideways within a range again that range being 15360 ish up to 18250 began back in 2014 really broke through with conviction right after the election 
Well, that's when it broke through. Now, that gives us a price projection of 21,000 to 20, 223 or so out there. We're not going to worry about the change. We'll just simply call it the Dow 21,000. So Dow 20,000, quite frankly, is nothing. That is not where the Dow is headed to, and then it's going to go ahead and take a dive. Now, that doesn't mean it can't retrace. I'm giving you the longer-term view. Nothing has changed. We haven't looked at intraday, uh, what the uh, Dow might do, where there's tops, things of that sort out here. But longer term, I want to make sure that I'm perfectly clear on this. Longer term, that is where the Dow wants to head to until we see something else that tells us differently. Look, any retracement, I don't, I'm not uh, out here advocating that this is what's going to happen, would take place all the way back to the top of the consolidation at 18,251 level out here. So we're right pretty much in the middle of that. Uh, maybe we're a little bit further up than the uh, middle of that area. On a daily basis, as we take a look at what the Dow is doing, now we'll go ahead and, and get rid of the scrunching out here. We've had nothing but a series of really small-bodied candles that uh, began back here on uh, December 12th. So today's December 21st, so you know, nearly 10 days later, calendar days later, we're just edging up uh, higher, slightly out here. Now, what the Dow did do, though, what it has done kind of silently, there was a reversal signal inside of the uh, Dow back on December 14th. In fact, let's do this here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let me pull this chart over here. Instead of the S&P 500, let's go take a look at the Dow. Let's just stick with it. Dow Jones Industrials. What we're going to see well, as soon as I can get that out here, we're going to see a couple of different uh, things. Well, we're going to see one thing. We're going to focus on one thing. There was an A to B equals CD that completed, and, I, and I'll show you that too. But let me get my cross here. Right here on this trading session, right here, this was on uh, December 13th. I believe that was the days when you saw a nice little TD sequential 13 count. Now, the Dow actually went ahead and gave us a confirmed TD sequential sell signal on this day here, it was basically pretty easy. That was uh, two days ago on December the uh, 20th. Uh, and it did that because it closed below the session of four bars prior. But what it didn't do, it did not take out Stevie's red line. That is your red line as well. We've adopted that red line here at TFNN. That's that oscillator on change line. That means that the price oscillator never even dipped to the downside. The bottom panel shows you the price oscillator as well, well above zero. In fact, the Dow's price oscillator higher than at any point in time I can locate. And Mike, we took the charts back yesterday into the, I think it was into the 80s was when we went back here. Highest price oscillator reading. What does that mean? Man, I mean strong like bull at this stage. Now, price has been moving higher, doing less relative energy out here. That's why we see this little black diagonal. Now, oh, first I want to get back to, so when you get a when you get a confirmed sell, those that would not pay attention to the oscillator and change line, they would just simply enter a short position in the Dow. This would have been on a Friday, right? Because it's Wednesday. Uh, this would have been on Monday. I, I say that now nah, you don't do that. You you pay attention to Stevie's red line out there. You at least need that. <clears throat> now that signal gets negated as soon as uh, price closes above the high of that December 13th session, and that is exactly what the Dow did yesterday. So that all-important Tom DeMarc count has failed as we speak at this stage of the game. There's a new pattern in town. There's a new sheriff in town. The Dow is moving higher, doing less relative energy. If we had a big, huge sell-off today, we'd actually have a, another sell signal that price relative strength diverges. That could easily take price back into the 19165 level. Steve Roach with TF. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to go take a look at uh, McDermott International Inc. for Mystic 17. I like that. Inside our uh, Tiger's Den. So welcome to the uh, den. Uh, Mystic is in at 686. And the question is, is there room to go yet to the upside? So here's what we know. We're going to take a look at uh, three different charts for you to help us analyze what uh, what uh, McDermott International Inc. might be doing. So if we take a look at the daily chart that we're going to start with. We know that this thing had a, a really nice run just simply by taking a look at it off of the uh, November 9th. Now, I don't know what McDermott International does, but let's go take a look at it. Maybe this is in the uh, construction business. MCD, is that what it was? MC, no, MDR. Uh, MDR. I probably should have taken a look at this, but uh, let me let me at least give you that information here. What uh, these uh, folks do: uh, provide engineering, procurement, construction, installation, module fabrication services for upstream field development. Whatever in the Sam Heck that means. It operates through three segments: the Americas, Europa, and Africa. The Middle East and Asia, that sounds like uh, more than three to me. But let's go take a look at this because this had a, a nice uh, bump off of the election at this stage. Moved higher. When it made its uh, swing point out here on December 12th, did volume of 4 million shares. Has begun pulling back. Nothing significant in the volume scenario. But what has occurred here in the last uh, three trading sessions is that you have received a brand new market profile. So these are the green lines that are on my chart. So here's what I'm going to do for you. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead on this study that we take a look at. We're going to go ahead and get rid of price. We don't really care about price. We do care about price, but right now we don't. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn off the daily profiles because we're going to focus first on the weekly. And uh, what we can see here, so the weekly profile is both bullish and bearish. Bullish from the standpoint that it formed above the prior profile. So that is good. The problem that we have right now is that this point of control, which is 724, has formed closer to the top of the box. So the box being the top and the bottom, this little center gauge telling us where both buyers and sellers are most comfortable with price. But how I like to use this is where is this in location to the top or the bottom? 
because my interpretation is this helps me to understand is it buyers or sellers that are in control of this pricing area. And in this case here, it says that sellers are in control of the price area from 595 to 789. Most certainly 789 to 724. Now I'll turn the dailies back on there. So that's that's an important piece of information that recently formed here, as I say, uh, began this week. Now let's go ahead and turn price back on. So if we were going to make a determination as to what this wants to do, we know now there's resistance, not just at the swing point from a few days uh, last week or so, maybe before that, uh, actually uh, December 12th, there's now new resistance here at 789. Doesn't mean it can't take it out. It does mean you've got a new resistance zone. If price is going to pull back here, and I don't see a reason to get out. What I want to do is I want to, uh, as your pilot, I want you to be able to understand where the turbulent areas are inside of the market. And you're, you're potentially at one right now. Now, a pullback here from here should take price down to about 725. Could get it down to 698. You're in at 686. So I don't know what the long-term thought process or view is on this. So you mentioned here that uh, you're considering flipping. Uh, may flip at any time. Uh, maybe I'm reading something else out there, so I think I am. So with regard to uh, this equity, um, you know, you're, and I don't know where your stop is at. Uh, if this pulls back to 725, you're still in the money. So again, first thing would be what's your longer term. Of, now, you know, what was your what was your trading uh, plan when you got into it? So that's one element that we're taking a look at. With regard to market profiles, you know, that's what uh, that's what this is indicating to us. Pull back to 725 to 698, and I say the 725 is is more likely than not out here. Now, why would I say that? Well, not because I just feel like saying it, because we've got that signal, and we also have this other signal. If we just take a look at the daily chart out here, and we start all the way back from the uh, bottom back on September 28th, and we just simply do our wave counts to the upside, you know that Stevie Wonder loves to sing in the key of G. And when we get up to that note, that key of G, we pay attention to it because that is where the market can make a turn. Well, guess what? When this thing popped up to that high on uh, December the uh, 12th or 13th, I think it was December 12th out here, singing in the key of G, pulls back the very next session. Now, price is below that red line, that oscillator and change line. 787 is the actual calculation for the uh, day. It would be very positive to see price get above that not above that, says our price oscillator has begun to turn down, says, you know, that retracement of that seven and a quarter area, that could be very likely out here. Now, that's what the daily shows. And if we just flip over here and take a look at the uh, weekly chart, well, guess what? Totally different date out here. Now, here's the bullish side. Here's the bearish side. The bullish side is if we come all the way back to uh, January 22nd, so basically the, the beginning of the bull run this year in the uh, markets, close to it. But if we come back in this equity to the week of January 22nd and we start doing our wave counts, guess what? We are in uh, wave number seven. Let me just go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and modify that so that it, it prints out here on the uh, system a little bit easier so you can see it. So you're, you're in... You're in uh, in the weekly and in the daily. You are in wave number seven, the upside. So I, I guess that begs the uh, question, where are we on the monthly? Let me just uh, MDR. Let me put this on the monthly chart out here. See what it is we see. Now, that's the so-called concerning part with regard to this equity. The uh, part that is uh, positive is certainly this has broken a nice trend line, this little red diagonal line that is on my screen. But, you know, the weekly chart says, yeah, pulling back to 671 is a, a possible is a possibility out. Now, the week is not over. So if you take out the highs, then that seventh wave just simply continues out here. So, you know, in answering your question, you are at a point where if you haven't already, you certainly want to go ahead and adjust your stops. Logical areas where this should pull back to, and you've got to make that decision. This does not mean to me that the move is over. Um, but uh, in this case here, a pullback to 725 or Ian, it gets below that. 698 is uh, wide open for you. That is what it looks like McDermott International wants to do based on its daily and current 
weekly chart out here. With regard to the monthly chart, I didn't see a whole lot out here. I saw one thing. When this went ahead and made a, a Tom DeMarc 9 count, that little setup, it formed this little green horizontal line for us. And so price, in essence, has come up. And that should be a natural level of resistance. Price hasn't made it all the way up there, which is about 845, but close enough for um, close enough for uh, our analysis out here. Um, so you've got a good trade, and uh, just simply adjust your stop if you haven't already out there. So I hope that that helps you out. That was for Mystic17. Let me see, were there any other, no other questions inside the email front out here? And again, with it being a quiet uh, day, the sort of a uh, sort of a sideways market, uh, please send me those emails for things you want to take a look at. I see a couple here from some some subscribers. Uh, those I'll get back to with regard uh, on a uh, on a uh, personal note uh, after the uh, show today. So I'll answer your questions for sure. So right now we've got the Dow. It is uh, down 22 points. No big deal. It's on its way to not 20,000, remember, but 21,000. NDX off four. We'll be right back. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The holiday season is here. And TFNN Salvation Army Tire Dollar Special is back right now. You can get a 25% bonus on your purchase. And 10% of whatever you spend will be donated in your name to the Salvation Army. The sale only comes around once a year, so don't miss out. Tiger Dollars are a great way to add extra savings to TFNN newsletters or services. And they never expire. Get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Thursday, December 22nd. And get your 25% bonus while donating 10% of your purchase to the Salvation Army. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back, uh, folks. One of our listeners, viewers, said uh, Steve-O. They didn't exactly say Steve-O, but uh, asked if I, uh, what are my thoughts on the uh, VIX index, the volatility index? So let's go take a look at the uh, volatility index. It can help us to identify when the S&P 500 uh, is bottoming. Uh, typically, those bottoms will form when it gets below Stevie's blue line out here. And clearly, we are below Stevie's blue line as we speak right now. Now, today's candle session, I do not know what this is going to look like at the uh, close. If we were to close right now, we could say, hey, it's uh, formed a hammer candle. And a hammer candle is a uh, session that uh, where it, in essence, especially at the end of a pattern, where it indicates to us that the market is trying to form a bottom. Now, there's some important hammer candles uh, that we can take a look at as well. I believe silver formed a hammer candle yesterday. I believe that the 30-year treasury formed a hammer candle uh, many days to go out there and so we'll go see how those hammer candles have responded thus far so one thing that we do know well again i don't know where it's going to close that's and that is going to be a key um and that what that could signal is that could be the low of the volatility volatility index um i don't have the time necessarily to do a study and go back and show you now maybe i can I don't know if I can or I can't. I probably can. I can do just about anything. I, I actually, I, I can do anything. That's the beauty. I mean, I, you've got that belief, don't you? Don't you have that belief that you can do basically any, anything out there? Um, now, that anything that I'm referring to right here is in the volatility index. Let me see if I can get a chart up here that uh, lets us go take a look at other hammer candles, right? So what I'll do is go back maybe about 10 years, just see if they have any significance out there. Isn't that really one of the questions that you would like to answer? Now, this chart here that I'm going to pop up once I can do that, once I get that set up here, uh, it's not going to show today's candle being hammered. Just, that's just my, my data feed because uh, I have so many different things going on. Sometimes right around showtime, it doesn't completely come through. But I don't have to rely upon that. I can rely upon, you know, the two eyes that uh, I was uh, given out here to uh, be able to show you, you know, actual hammer candles. Now, all the previous ones, those will be accurate out here. So let's go ahead and put this chart. Let's go take a look at some other hammer candles inside of the uh, VIX index. Now, we're assuming that it's going to show a hammer candle today. That assumption could be just simply dead wrong out there. But let's just, uh, for this game that you and I are playing, is uh, let's just assume that uh, that is the case. Now, the most the most recent hammer candle that formed, other than today's, came right, well, it was that's so much for drawing a line, but you kind of get the feel for it. Let me get my cursor out here. That took place out here on July 20th. And July 20th, uh, you did see the market, the, the VIX index, I should say, continue to move higher. I would imagine S&P 500 also formed a little bit of a, a top back then and, in fact, went ahead and pulled back. So that hammer most certainly worked out here. Uh, the time before that was on top. <laughs> Come on. Hey, really? Well, it was really December 24th. It wasn't December 21st out there. But on December 24th, right, when uh, all through the house, everyone was sleeping, including the mouse, uh, what we had out here was a nice little hammer candle. That, I believe, on December 24th, we also had a gap down inside the NDX 100, if I recall correctly, which formed an island top out there. So here's the market communicating to both you and I at the highs inside the NDX 100 last year around Christmas time. And I, I, I could be wrong. It could have been a couple days before Christmas out there. But whenever it was, it was right around that time frame. Maybe it was a few days after. But right around that time frame, basically, you had an island top form inside uh, the NDX 100. On the 24th, we had a, a nice little hammer candle. It certainly meant something then. Will it mean something now? Could be. Most likely, you know, could very well be. Other hammers out here. You had a back to back. You had a doble gi, a double header out here on March 24th and March 20, uh, 30, March 23rd, March 24th in 2015. Led to a big move to the upside inside the VIX index. It lasted for two days, but it was a sizable move. I would imagine we would have seen the S&P 500 pulling back as well. But, but so far, these hammer candles that you and I have looked at, although it's really only, what, four or five? maybe 
46 now. Here is another hammer candle taking us back to 2013. You can see that the VIX index doesn't often form hammer candles, but when it does, it is certainly worth paying gosh darn attention to it. At least it is so far. Oh, now we can finally get back to a time period in 2013, right around the July 18th, 19th time frame. Hammer Candle completely failed the very next session out there. And you know what it says with the Hammer Candle when you close below a low. If you're long, you are wrong out there. That is in the Hammer Candle language or Stevo language out here. There's a couple of uh, another failures, so they don't always work, right? But the, the bottom of that Hammer Candle is really important. July 17, 2012, had a hammer candle form. And uh, voila, that failed for the next few sessions out here. I come back into uh, February 17, 2012. That hammer candle worked well. And in fact, take a look at that long wick inside that hammer candle. Remember, the body of the candle is the essence of price. When you take a look at a hammer candle, boy, the wicks can be very, very important. Long-legged, long wick, long lower shadow out there. That does have a lot of meaning. You know, it's like a football game. It's like uh, it's like the uh, whoever it might be, the offense, you know, fumbles it on the goal line. Defense picks it up, runs it all the way back for a touchdown. Or maybe it gets knocked out at the 5 or 10-yard line. That's what that kind of hammer was on uh, February the uh, 6th, 2012. So you can go back, take a look at the S&P 500 on those dates out there and uh, try to get a, a feel. So with regard to what is the message of the VIX, well, we just took a look at other hammer candles and I would say paying attention to it and where it closes today could give us uh, some important clues as, as far as the next moves inside of the market. Then if that's the case, that would just say that you got to put 20,000 on hold. Really, Steve would say you've got to put 21 thousand on hold for a little bit of a, a while out here but that's uh, now what else can we take a look at inside of the vix well that's so that would be the bullish vix side of it forms a hammer candle today what's the bearish side of it i don't know let's go see if we can figure that out yeah i put this chart up here with regard to the uh, vix we know the s p 500 has basically been you know moving to higher ground out here what i like to see when the market is going to make a top a more subtle clue is that you start to see higher closes. So when we go to a line chart out here, we get rid of all the noise. We say the heck with the body of the candle being the essence of price and the heck with the upper and lower shadow. We're just concerned about the closes. Now, where is that important? I found this to be an extremely useful tool inside of the uh, VIX index out here because it gives us clues, which is really what you and I are looking for. Now, in the case of the uh, when the S&P 500 has in essence gone ahead and formed, uh, you know, decent tops out here. What we have seen is we have seen higher closing lows inside the VIX. For example, this one taken us back into October 2016. Or we can come back into the time period of August 15, 2016, when there was a pretty significant top in the S&P 500 that had formed. That was the top that took you all the way down into the November 4th low out here so this is important we do not have that pattern in play as we speak just yet so the message of the vix even it is uncertain but let's pay attention to that hammer candle should it indeed form steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back are china a shares hot or not if you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, Dow off 17 S&P down two uh, from uh, John in Sarasota and uh, best wishes to you this season as well, John. Uh, he is asking, uh, what do you see for, very cute the way you did that, uh, SEO. Now, SEO is the uh, three-time bear position on uh, crude oil. So that is the bottom portion of our screen out here. The top portion of our screen is, in fact, the uh, current uh, January contract for light sweet crude. So I think best to look at both. Now, the reason why I say best to look at both is, in essence, because the crude oil chart, the uh, futures contract, is the underlying instrument for SEO. And what I don't want to do is give away information, which I'm going to anyways. I don't mean I don't want to give away information. I want to give away bad information. And it's not this bad information. I'm referring to the market profiles out here. It's just that the market profiles that should influence us more are the profiles on the underlying instrument versus the ETF out there. Hard to do when you take a look at the S&P 500 as an example. So what you and I is so if I look at those profiles on the SPY, I'd say, OK, they're meaningful. But not necessarily as meaningful as if we take a look at the equity futures contract. So that's the uh, that's that's how. Or if I look at GLD versus what's a gold contract doing out there. So just for just to just to make that um, an important piece of what we're looking at. So, John, I would assume that by asking what do I see for SEO, you're considering going short light sweet crude. So let's take a look at what would actually need to occur in order for for Steve-O to say, yeah, that would that would be the uh, move out here. So I'm going to turn off SEO, and we're just going to first take a look at light sweet crude. So here's what you and I know. First of all, light sweet crude is trading out at 52.23. The uh, both the daily and the weekly market profiles are at 52.14. That's the weekly profile. You're trading above that, short-term bullish. The daily is 52.06. Light sweet crude trading above that, short-term bullish. Trading inside of its swing point high out here from just a few days ago, December 12th to be specific, the low is 52.18. We're trading above that. This way, we don't have to worry about volume. If you close inside a swing point and you're up above profiles, this would say to me that price could easily make a run for the top of that swing. That is 54.51. So if you're looking for because you believe that it's uh, that uh, shorting light sweet crude is the right thing to do, I'd say wait for a failure on price. One of two things. 
Price to come back and get below both the daily and weekly profile levels. So we gave you those numbers again, 5206 and 5214. Lack of that occurring out there. Wait until you see a test of that high. And maybe even a, maybe even a, a spike above that area. That high again being 5166. There's absolutely nothing here that shows us that light sweet crude is bearish. If we go take a look at where that oscillator unchanged line is, so let me give that to you as another figure. The oscillator unchanged line, $51.60. If price were to close below that, I could say, okay. Uh, now, at least the price oscillator, the difference between two exponential moving averages, 19 and 39, those are the ones that Stevie uses because I believe in rocket science. If I got my tuchus, and you know what that refers to, strapped to a rocket, I want a rocket scientist helping me in that jet propulsion laboratory to continue making sure that I'm in proper orbit. And that's, in essence, where the 19 and 39-day exponential moving average really comes from. But that's a whole nother story. It sounds like I told you some of the story, though. 5160, though, is a real key level. Price is coming back and testing it, rejecting it. It's nothing more than just tests of supports out here, Test a test of support. So I don't see anything here that says you should jump on board the SCO train right now. Now, when would you, if you were, gonna, if you were so inclined to go ahead and take a position to short uh, light sweet crude? So we've given you the parameters there to take a look at. What does that mean for us in SCO? Well, let me go ahead and repopulate SCO. There we go. That's the bottom. You can see how it's acting from an inverse standpoint to light sweet crude. You know, what are the numbers to be paying attention to? I don't know. I can tell you the bottom of the box is 62.41. You're trading at 66.70. But to me, the bottom of the box on SCO is kind of meaningless you know you can even go test the swing point out here from december 12th that low is 52.18 i'd say that has more meaning than the market profiles because if light sweet crude is going to go spike the high or take out the high from december 12th so too to a certain extent, because these get recalculated, rejiggered every day out there. But, you know, maybe it's going to be when price gets below 52.18, closes back above it, does it with more than, well, I don't know what the volume is because I didn't put that uh, that son of a gun on my uh, sheet out here. But I'll do that for you, John. Uh, the volume out there you'd be looking at would be something less than 1.7 million shares to be a test and rejection of a swing point out there. Um, so uh, that's my uh, read. That's what I see for SEO. And that's also taking a look at the uh, late sweet crude. So I hope that that helps you out. And again, happy holidays to you as well. Okay. Uh, well, I'll check, see if anybody else has uh, written in here, because this really is your hour. Uh, I'm just here to uh, fly you around the uh, charts, fly you around the markets out here. So uh, I don't see uh, anything else that has uh, come in. So uh, we'll just go do something, uh, you know, something random. Random would say, what is this, uh, Miris NV? Is this the first day of trading? No, it is not. What is it? Uh, it's broken out. They had halted for trading. Uh, well, expected to resume. What did they do? I don't have any news on it. Well, let's go take a look at it. Ticker symbol MRUS. And no no volume in this thing. In fact, you know what? We're not going to go ahead. This has to be like a revert. It doesn't have to be anything. But there's basically no volume. Just to give you an idea, yesterday I traded 5,962 shares, 14,000 a day before. And we're not going to look at something that has such thin trading out here that somebody could potentially entertain even getting into it because of something that I might say out there with such lack of liquidity. We're just not going to do it. But we can go take a spin around Whirlpool. Let's go see what Whirlpool is doing. That does look like it's breaking out above a swing point out here. That could be a B point of an A to B equals CD, several A to B equals CD. The swing I'm referring to is December. December the 12th, volume there, 944,000 shares. You're up with 632 today. So looks like it is taking that level out with volume. Let's go put it on some of the other charts, see if there's anything out here that uh, shows up on uh, Whirlpool. W-H-R is the uh, ticker symbol. And we'll just try to figure out where this is uh, headed to. 
Um, interestingly enough, let's go put this on our chart. So prices started to move higher to a less relative energy, but that pattern until a bearish reversal signal shows up. It just means it's potential. That's all that it is. If we do some wave counts off of the uh, bottom, let's go uh, check into uh, those out here. You got those wave. Well, you are in wave number seven. Very interesting out here. So you've got Whirlpool making a Stevie Wonder singing in the key of G. Of course, the choir would be, that would be, you know, from uh, Basil Chapman's uh, Chapman Wave system. But this just focuses on the key of G. None of the other elements of the Chapman Wave being incorporated into this. But it is something to uh, consider. So I wouldn't necessarily jump on board this train here. Not that it can't continue to move higher. There's nothing bearish about the chart that we're looking at. Just that it's in one of those potential patterns where you'd want to be somewhat cautious. Now, that would play out if you were to see a close below the oscillator and change line, which is 176.21, and we're not there. But uh, Whirlpool looks uh, at this stage here like it wants to run all the way back up to the highs in the 195 area and make that 100% uh, move of a move. When we get back from this uh, show, this uh, segment, we're going to look at ticker symbol L-O-W, I believe. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome 
back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow off about 18 right now. S&P is down uh, two points. Let's go take a look at uh, lows for AG in the uh, Tigers Den ticker symbol. There is L-O-W. So as we take a look at uh, lows out here, here's what we know. Prices above all market profiles. When I say all, I'm referring to daily and weekly. Uh, just uh, just got back up above the uh, daily yesterday. Was tested and rejected again this morning. That price level being 73.85. That being said, uh, the freedom now is to run up to this big, wide-ranging bar with decent volume. Nothing that's substantial. 9.2 million shares from December 7th. But price ought to go head up and test the 76.47 level. Now the uh, beauty there is because there's not like huge volume. Uh, taking that out for another A to B equals C to the upside is uh, very doable. Where there's going to be some problems inside of low, if there is problems, it's uh, very clear is going to be where we had this big, huge gap to the downside. Now, we're going to take a look at the uh, low from the uh, day prior, which was August 16th. That's 80.81. And we're going to take a look at the high from the day where the gap occurred, 78.05. That's 78.05. We can see when that gap occurred, that was significant resistance, right? Curves on that uh, day of August 17th, a little bit lower the next day. The next day tries to move back up. You then get tests and rejections for three, four out of the next five days in a row. So 78.05 is going to be a significant level of resistance. Getting above that changes the polarity of this, uh, of, of this stock chart, meaning that old resistance could or should become new support out here. But there was big volume to the downside. Doesn't mean that it's not going to move up there. In fact, the A to B equals CD. We'll see if it's confirmed or not. Uh, this would, we'll do it from here. We'll do it from the swing point of November 16th, then up to November 23rd, then back down to 1201. You know, suggest that the one to one in the 77, 17, 79, 14 area, you know, is likely to be completed out here. Markets don't end on wide ranging bars. Price never got outside of this wide ranging bar. So getting back, AG, I would say getting back and testing the top of that bar again, 7647, getting up to that 7805 is probably what Lowe's wants to do. But be careful. Be Beware of that 7805 level. I hope that that helps you out. And uh, and if not, just let me know. Just post something else in the uh, Tiger's Den, and we'll go take a look at that as well. So we'll just check in one last time while there's about two minutes to go. And I do want to thank all of you for sending in the request emails. It makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah, I can understand if you can't call in. Um, you know, but again, if you want me to take a look at something, you know, this is like I say, this show is really all about you. It's all for you out here. So no other requests that are in. Um, you know, I think uh, you and I have really taken a look at the most important elements out here in the stock charting heaven. Uh, there's nothing else going on. Advanced decline oscillators, they're still all above zero. All looks well out there. Uh, we didn't really speak about uh, Goldilocks uh, today. You're probably tired of hearing about gold. It's flat. Uh, the uh, yen is, uh, is strengthening. Um, and so that is a positive. Well, we, I mentioned other hammer candles. Okay, so here, and I didn't ever go back to it. I hate to do that. The other important hammer candle, I mentioned silver, but here's the other important hammer candle that has been tested, was rejected. That was the December 12th hammer candle inside of the 30-year uh, bond out here. So that low of 147.1 is an extremely important low. As long as that doesn't get taken out, bonds want to try to get moving to the upside. If we can see the end strengthen, they'll be able to do that. The same holds true with uh, Goldilocks. So nothing has changed there with regard to that correlation. We need to see a consistent strengthening inside of the uh, Japanese yen, which would then weaken the U.S. dollar by about 13% of the weighting structure inside there. No big deal. Folks, stay tuned for some great programming. Of course, the Tom O'Brien Show from 3 to 5. And we'll be back with you on terrific maybe that'll be 20,000 thursday have a great afternoon folks Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.